For centuries, designers and builders have been making decisions on hard landscaping surfaces based on what's locally available. We have a much wider range of materials to choose from. We can choose materials from all over the world in all colours, shapes, sizes, textures and price points. Today I'm going to tell you how to make the best decisions for hard landscaping surfaces for your garden. So there are three things you need to keep in mind when you're making hard landscaping decisions. Firstly, impact. The materials you choose will make the most significant impact on the overall look, layout and budget of the whole garden, so you need to get it right. Secondly, you need to think about practicality. You need to create stable surfaces so that when you have your seating you won't sink into the ground. You need to think about paths for getting around the garden without getting your feet muddy. You need to still think about how it all fits in with the garden. So you need to think about a sympathetic design using materials which complement the house and the surrounding landscape. When it comes to paving slabs, you'll be spoilt for choice. But here's a few tips to help you work your way through the minefield. In a cottage garden, I would choose a mix of irregular slabs that lock together a bit like a jigsaw. It will give your garden a sense of instant history and it will be very much in keeping with the style. These will often come in a natural stone, perhaps a limestone or a sandstone. The advantage of that is that stone always looks better the longer you've had it if it's a natural stone. But the disadvantage comes in terms of cost. As you can see, natural stone will often come in a quite a wide range of thicknesses, so you have to bear in mind that you're going to have to level each slab individually, and so the costs are going to add up. A good way around this is to choose a reconstituted stone which has been made from gravel, which has been bound with cement. Now, a lot of people have put off the quality of these because by the time you get to a really good, convincing reconstituted stone, it will cost the same amount of money as a natural stone. But there are a lot of advantages. They tend to be reliably non-slip. They're much thinner, so they're lighter and easier to lay, so they don't cost as much to put down in terms of labour. The techniques have advanced so much over the last few years and actually a lot of the good ranges have been cast from flags in National Trust properties so they are really, really convincing. If you're going for a more contemporary look, a sawn edge is a really nice choice. It's very crisp and clean and clinical. If you use paving slabs of the same size and you repeat them on a grid or in a staggered grid, you get a really nice crisp contemporary finish. You can also consider a limestone. I really like the hammered finish of this limestone, which is a really subtle texture, but it makes it non-slip. You will have to dig a little bit deep for limestone though, because it can be a bit pricey. If heritage gardening's your thing, you'll want to be on the lookout for reclaimed materials. Nothing gives a garden a sense of history like old stuff. A great tip is to go on free cycle. People who are clearing out their garden will be only too happy for you to come and take away bits which they're not planning on using. It's a great way of picking up old flags, lawn edging, stone, perhaps even old statues or gardenalia. If you're after a bigger scale, then you'll need to get yourself down your local reclamation yard. Uh, you'll need to be quick, you'll need to be decisive, because the good stuff doesn't hang around for long. Remember, if you want old, buy old. Gravel has got a bad reputation. That's because you're thinking of this stuff rounded pea shingle. You can see the curved edges, it just won't stick together and it just goes absolutely everywhere. It'll be carried indoors on your shoes, try and put something like a table and chairs on there and you'll sink. It's like living on a beach. You want the right stuff. Angular gravel and less than 10 millimeters in size. It's inexpensive, it locks together, it can be poured into any shape you like. It's so fluid. Better still, look out for a self-binding gravel. This is an angular gravel, but it goes right down from 10 millimetres down to dust, so it's got some really fine particles in there. And that will bind and lock together to form a fantastically sturdy surface. Now, most of the time you're meant to lay it and then water it, which locks all the different bits together because all the different sized particles will kind of like meld together. But here's my tip for you. Lay it in the autumn and it's bound to rain, so that'll just sort it all out for you and you won't need to lift a finger. Whether you've gone for natural stone, reconstituted, paving, gravel, slabs, it doesn't matter. You need to make sure you love it all year round. So my top tip for you, take yourself a hose pipe or watering can, wet your chosen material, 
just to check it's going to look just as good all year round.